My name is Django Bada. I'm an associate professor in the Soil, Water, and Ecosystem Sciences Department at the University of Florida. Phosphorus is a non-renewable resource and essential for plant and human life. Its primary use is as fertilizer, and with current disruptions in supply chains and increase in fertilizer costs, we need to understand fate and transport of phosphorus in the natural system and identify ways in which it can potentially be conserved and reused. Legacy phosphorus is the phosphorus present in soils and sediments that is not bioavailable for plant uptake. Knowing the different forms of phosphorus, whether it is labile or recalcitrant is critical in developing sustainable phosphorus solutions. One of the ways of measuring different forms of phosphorus is by using the modified Headley fractionation method. Over the next few minutes, graduate students will describe this process to you. Welcome to our Soil Water Nutrient Management Lab. This is MD Onik Mahmood. I am a first year PhD graduate student here at University of Florida. Hello everyone, my name is Xiaobai, a second year graduate student in University of Florida. In this video, we will demonstrate how to do Headley fractionation step by step. Moreover, in every step, we will explain how to make the chemical reagent and also how, how to do the chemical reactions. Headley fractionation is a sequential extraction process where the easily extractable phosphorus is extracted first. Here in the process of Headley fractionation, we will extract soluble P using one molar KCl. For soluble P extraction, we need chemicals and that the name of the chemical is Pathan solution. For that, we need ammonium molybdate and sulfuric acid. From Pathan solution, we will prepare combined reagent using ascorbic acid. To begin the extraction of soluble P, first you have to weigh the centrifuge tube, then you have to weigh 2 gram of soil samples and then put it into the 50 milliliter of centrifuge tube. Then you have to add 20 milliliter of 1 molar KCl, followed by shaking for 2 hours. Then you have to centrifuge at 10,000 RPM for 20 minutes. After centrifugation, you have to extract the supernatant using filter paper Whiteman 41. Then the rest of the residue samples put into the oven dry at 60 degrees Celsius and the supernatant will be analyzed for soluble P using combined reagent. To analyze the soluble P, we have to make standards of 0 0.05, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0.75 and 1 milligram per liter. This batch of phosphate standards can be changed depending on the samples. After making the standards, we have to take 5 milliliter of samples and a standard. Then we have to add 1 milliliter of combined reagent. Then we have to mix the samples and put the sample into the hot bath for 90 degrees Celsius for 40 minutes. By doing this, a color will develop. Then we have to use spectrophotometer with range 880 nanometer to analyze soluble B. After the first extraction, now we can extract aluminum and iron phosphate using 0, 1 molar sodium hydroxide. Apart from the sodium hydroxide, we need to prepare the PATAM solution. From the PATAM solution, we can get the combined reagent by adding the ascorbic acid. For iron and aluminum bound phosphorus, First, we have to take out our sample tube from oven and we have to weigh each tube followed by adding 20 milliliter of 0.1 normal 
sodium hydroxide to each tube. Then we have to shake the samples for 17 hours followed by centrifugation at 10,000 RPM for 20 minutes. Then we have to extract the supernatin using filter Wattman 41. After that we have to save the residue samples and place them inside the oven at 60 degrees Celsius for next extraction. The supernatin of this extraction will be used to analyze iron aluminium bound phosphorus using combined reagent. For analyzing iron and aluminium phosphorus, we have to take one milliliter of the samples and the standards and dilute that to five times. Then we have to take five milliliter of these diluted samples. We have to add one milliliter of combined reagent to each samples. Then we have to wait for 15 to 20 minutes for color development. After that, we have to use EVP's spectrometer at 880 nanometer to analyze the samples to know the concentration using standards as we showed before. After doing all the steps, the dry residue are kept in oven at 60 degrees Celsius to begin the calcium magnesium bound P fractionation. But before that, we have to do humic fulvic P analyzing using the same samples. After second extraction, the humic and fulvic P is extracted using the same solution of sodium hydroxide by acidifying with 11 normal sulfuric acid followed by digestion at 150 degrees Celsius. In this section, we're going to use two chemicals. One is a sulfuric acid, another one is a potassium persulfate. And the solutions will be measured with ICP. For humic and fulvic P extraction, we have to take 5 ml of extract into digestion tubes. At the same time, we need blank. For blank, we have to use the same chemicals that we used before for iron and aluminium P, which is 0.1 normal sodium hydroxide. Then we have to add 1.5 milliliter of element normal sulfuric acid, then 0.3 gram of potassium per sulfate. Then we have to digest the samples at 150 degrees Celsius for two hours until all water evaporates. Place the glass funnels on the tubes in the digestion machine and digest it for four hours at 350 degrees Celsius until the solution become colorless. If there is water present, then we have to re-digest it at 150 degrees Celsius again. Then lastly, we have to dilute the samples after digestion using 15.5 milliliter of DI water, followed by vortex and filter. The samples can be kept at 4 degrees Celsius. The sample is later analyzed using ICP OES. After extraction of iron and aluminum phosphorus, the calcium and magnesium is extracted with the solid residue where 0.5 more hydrochloric acid is used as extractant. For this analysis, we're gonna use the same fathom solution we used in aluminum and iron bound P and also the combined reason but this time we will use the freshly prepared combined reason and for this analysis we will use UVB's spectrometer. For calcium magnesium bound P extraction first we have to take the tubes kept into the oven we take out the tubes from the oven, weigh them up. Then we have to add 20 milliliter of 0.05 normal ACL, followed by shaking for 24 hours. Then we have to centrifuge the samples at 10,000 RPM for 20 minutes. Then we have to extract the supernatant, filter out with Wattman 41 filter papers. Then 
we have to analyze the supernatal using e with his spectrometer at 180 nanometer again we have to put our residue into the oven to begin the next extraction after extraction of calcium magnesium p the solid residue will be heated at 550 degrees celsius in muffle furnace followed by acidification by 6 molar acl from there we'll go we'll able to know the concentration of residue phosphorus using icp oes for residue p first we have to weigh the empty bakers then we have to completely transfer the dry residue soil into the beakers then weigh them again then we have to put these beakers into the muffle furnace for 550 degrees celsius for four hours when the beakers are cooled down we have to add six molar acl and the amount is two milliliter for two hours after that we have to add 18 milliliter of di then we have to shake the samples and filter out the supernatant will be used to analyze residue P using ICP OES.